We're still graphing linear functions and I want to show you very quickly the bird's eye view again. Sorry, that's not that cheap. No, over here where we have different types of functions yeah? and a linear function where x, uh, the highest power of x is a 1, so just x. If you graph it, you will always get a line, a straight line if you like. We have quadratic functions with the highest power of 2, it's a curve. Cubic functions, some sort of S figure, yeah? the highest power of x is a 3. We have reciprocal functions consisting out of two parts. Exponential functions with x in the exponent, okay? All different types of functions. And you will only really and truly understand these functions if you understand linear functions. And if we graph a linear function, we are going to get a line. Yes, a straight line, because all lines are straight. And then I said, or we said, well, to draw a line, we need two points, okay? Because one point is not enough. My line can go into any direction. Yeah, but if I know two points, then that's that, okay? However, you always find at least three points to check your work, because maybe you made a silly mistake plotting those coordinates, yeah? So with three points, you know for sure that it's right or wrong, and then you can check what you've done wrong. Now, we're going to graph these three linear functions, yeah? In my previous video, the one before this one, where we graph these four linear functions, we notice that that number in front of my x does something with the steepness of my line, yeah? So it, it, it defines the steepness of my line, where a negative number in front of my x makes the line going down. And all these lines went through the origin, because it only said x and 2x and a half x and minus 2x, and it was plus zero if you like, so through the origin. And then I uh, promise you to have a look now at three uh, functions where it doesn't say plus zero, but it says plus one or minus three or minus two there. Okay, so that is a summary of what we've done so far. Let's have a look now. Table of values, yeah, a fishbone table. I'm gonna pick three points, yeah, let's pick zero. Y is zero plus one, that is one. Yeah, so I'm substituting the value I choose in my function. One plus one, Y will be two. And I can choose anything I want, yeah, but choose uh, smart numbers. I don't choose a thousand, because that's not, not gonna fit. Two plus one is going to be three, excellent. And I'm going to plot those three points, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 2, 1, 2. And hopefully that third point is on the same line. Yes, it is. So I didn't make a silly mistake. So now I can draw my line with a sharp pencil and a ruler. Don't draw it too short. A nice, confident, long line like that. You see that? Just in one go. And label your line so everybody knows which line it is. X plus 1. Good. Beautiful line, and what do I notice now? It doesn't go through the origin anymore, like these, yeah? Where it said plus zero, it went through point zero, the origin. But now it says plus one, and it goes through that point where y is one, yeah? when x is zero. Interesting. Now, what do I expect this line to go through? Will it be minus three? Let's check it out, uh, let's find it out. Okay, uh, if x is one, um, y is going to be 1 minus 3 is minus 2. When x is 2, 2 minus 3 is minus 1. When x is 3, 3 minus 3 is going to be 0. Good, I'm going to plot those three points. 1 minus 2, 1 uh, minus 2, yep. Yeah. 2 minus 1, 2 minus 1, yep. Yeah. And 3 is 0. And yes, they go, or they lie on the same line, and if I graph it, look at that. That is indeed what I expected. It is going through the point minus one, minus two, minus three, yeah? So I notice now that that number there at the end, the constant, defines where my line cuts the y-x. What my, and I'm gonna write down that word now, it defines my y-intercept my y-intercept, where my function, where my line goes through the y-x, yeah? The plus one, it goes through the one. The minus three, it goes through the minus three. When it's zero, it goes through zero, which is the origin, okay? The second thing I notice is that these two lines are equally as steep. You see that? They are parallel. And why are they parallel? Because that number in front of their x, yeah, the coefficient of their x term, is equal, it's one. 
And that's what we noticed in the previous video, is that that number defines the steepness of a line. Okay, so I'm understanding now more of the function, more of the equation, if you like, of my linear graph, yeah? I know, for instance, now, just by looking at it, that this line is going to be steeper or less steep than that line. It's going to be steeper because a 2 is a bigger number than a 1. Yeah, so it's going to be a steeper line. And where would it go through the y-x? What is my y-intercept? That's going to be minus 2. Yeah, that's that point where x is 0. Okay, so I understand the equation. Of course, I'm still going to find at least three points. Let's say when x is 1, 2 times 1 is 2, minus 2 is 0. When x is 2, 2 times 2 is 4, minus 2 is 2. When x is 3, 2 times 3 is 6, minus four, 2 is 4, okay? So I'm still finding those points, but it's so useful, boys and girls, if we understand what we're doing, if we understand what we're doing. 1, 0, I said, 2, 2. Because then, if you understand maths, guys, it becomes so much more fun. Three, four. Are my three points on the same line? Yes, they are, so I didn't make a mistake. And look at that, look at that. That's exactly what I expected it to go through, eh? The y-intercept being minus two. Look at that, fantastic. And yes, indeed, it's steeper than the other two lines because of that coefficient of my x term. Let's label it y equals two x minus two. Fantastic, linear functions, guys. We understand the equations now a little bit, yeah? Uh, in more detail, I explain these, um, uh, I, I explain this in more detail when I'm doing corner geometry, yeah? So please check that as well when you're constructing equations, yeah? But it's fantastic that we have gotten so far. I have one video left now uh, about linear functions, which look like this. What if it just says y equals three? Or y equals minus one? What about these two special ones? Yeah, very important this last video about linear uh, functions. Okay, so don't miss it. Check my site explainingmaths.com for more free resources. I'll see you there. Bye bye.